Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. So today is February 14th and I'm showing you how to create a chocolate and a candle from 3D printing and thermoforming. Here's just me just tuning up the printer. It's like 11 o'clock at night on a Monday and I'm just calibrating, trying to get these prints done before Valentine's Day. And I find that I have to calibrate the Elegoo every time I start a print. And this is because, I don't know if it's just me, but this is because when I remove the print, I always notice that the plate shifts to the left or the right, and then it's not leveled anymore. There's the completed print that I have. Obviously, it didn't take 10 seconds. It took around six hours to complete. If you're interested in seeing the process of making this model, as well as preparing it for thermal forming, you can just go uh, watch it to the end of this video because I will be talking about it in greater detail. Hello, hello, hello. Today is February 14th and I think it's probably one of my favorite holidays because you know you get to share the love with everybody. This Valentine's Day I'm in school so I literally have midterms. I didn't make these treats in the quantity that I wanted to to give away because I do love a lot of people so I do love to give away gifts but I did have a moment or two to create them and show you the process and how I did it. So firstly I went into Fusion 360 and I will kind of go through what I did in terms of design. It was fairly simple because it is just some shapes and some letters. The hardest part was just you know, finding the customized text that I wanted to use and then importing that to make sure that it was functional in Fusion and I can get the task done. The second hardest part was waiting for these prints to be completed because you know, you know how 3D printing is, it takes forever. But these were the two finalized models that I came up with two nights ago. <laughs> and essentially it's just super simple. It's a candle design mold that's on its side, as well as like a chocolate bar. And it says, be my Valentine question mark with some hearts. And the hearts are a little extruded up as, as well as the text. So uh, these two, I did print them separately on the Elegoo Saturn resin 3D printer. I did uh, hollow them out. So they do have holes at the back and they are hollow. So they're super light. But this is critical for thermoforming because when you have your item uh, here on the bed, there's a vacuum that pulls the sheet so that it can create the mold. And this allows the air to kind of flow through and get to those little small spots, like let's say the E of the Valentine or you know even like this area. 
that ensures that it actually suctions properly and creates that indentation in the mold. Gosh, I was actually really happy with the results. The candle turned out so nicely. It is a really cute heart and I did light it for a little bit. It worked out perfectly, there's no issues and it has a wonderful scent. It's like a nice floral scent. I did it in like a darker pink and a lighter pink. I was going for red with that one, but you know. The sheets that I use are food safe. They look like this, they are 0.5 millimeter and it comes in a pack of 30 and you can literally make a mold within 10 minutes. Like it's so easy. The longest part is actually waiting for the heater to heat up. As opposed to silicone mold making, which I am also deeply in love with, this takes so little time to do. The only thing is in terms of like durability, silicone lasts like, you know, forever versus this is like wear and tear so you can get maybe like 10 to 20 uses of it depending on how well you take care of it in terms of the chocolate the process was the same but this was the result i'm so happy with it the text came out perfectly and um i was actually able to put some mica powder on the heart so it's a little shimmery i don't know if you can tell but um the only issue is here you can kind of see the line and that line was actually a printing error so um due to my lack of time i uh couldn't post process it to the degree that i wanted to so I did do some sanding, but if I wanted to actually have like a production quality mold, I would have probably sanded it down and then put a layer of epoxy resin just to coat it and make sure it's nice and flawless. But you know, I think this is good for the amount of time that I gave myself. If you're interested in thermoforming, I would definitely check out Make Goose products because they have a wide range of material selection as well as they have uh, multiple different machines for your specific application. So for this one, this is great for hobbyists and it's great for, um, I guess, people who are in the baking industry or even mold making or even package design. A lot of people use this to create packaging and for me like i i'm like oh packaging you know something that people throw out like i really want to utilize these sheets for something that is like something that i can use and use time and time again so and they also have a larger machine that i had the pleasure of being able to use at my previous job and it is absolutely amazing so if you want to check it out like totally do it and um if you think it will fit your needs you know why not I'm planning on launching an Etsy store and also like a website. I'm working on it right now. It's super close to being completed. Um, I'm kind of like working on it in and out because I'm also managing like my workload at school and also gonna be starting an internship in uh, April. So like I'm all over the place and I'm trying to like divide my time and stay sane and be healthy like it's too much like the adulting life is just way too much i did not sign up for this i don't even care at this point like i just want to start it out and if it sucks whatever just build on it and like create new things and whatnot because like i i feel like i make so many cool things and a lot of people ask about it and they're like oh where can i get it but i never i don't have the infrastructure in place so i'm definitely gonna start like implementing that but anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. And I definitely plan on posting weekly, like even if they're not the longest videos, just to kind of give an update and show what I'm doing because like I'm always up to some nonsense, you know? I'm always up to something. Like I can't sit still. I just love making stuff. I don't know. Like I don't, it, a life is not worth living if you're not making things in my opinion. And I guess that's why I'm now in architecture. Anyways, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions on this procedure or if you are interested in seeing a particular mold, I'll definitely look into it. Thank you. Bye. All right. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I'm going to go over now how I created these molds on the back end. Like I said previously, it was looking for the font that was one of the most difficult aspects for me because there's so many different kinds of fonts. But for this particular project, I used Creative Fabrica, which is an amazing website with so many assets in terms of fonts, PNGs, graphics, and they also have SVGs for laser engraving and laser cutting, which I find pretty cool as well. So if you're interested, I'm going to leave a link in the description. Check it out. See if it'll be useful for you and your projects. 
I also downloaded the Heart SVG. I could have mocked it up quickly in Fusion, but I wanted something that uh, perfectly resembled the heart. I didn't want to do any guessing, but yeah, it only took uh, two seconds to download. And I believe the preferred file for Fusion is DXF, and they typically have that option available. After downloading the text, I just closed Fusion and opened it up and the text was automatically loaded within the software. So really simple, really easy. I was able to type it out I didn't realize for a bit, but I had to explode the text because I wasn't able to extrude it inward without doing so. So after figuring that out, the process was super simple. Uh, you just inset it to whatever depth you want it. I didn't make it too deep because I wanted to ensure that the text was visible in the mold and it didn't have to travel so far. And sometimes the actual plastic sheets, they rip if you have too much of depth and it doesn't create a nice even flat surface as well here i'm just creating the flat edge of the candle super simple i just extruded a rectangular shape to have a flat edge but as i was exporting i realized that i didn't export in high quality so you can see the difference is quite substantial and for resin printing every detail comes through so you want to make sure it's high quality the last step here is just adding the venting hole so that there is proper airflow and the mold is created nice and evenly. I really enjoyed this project. I did cram it in, but I am so happy I was able to complete it and I hope you enjoyed and learned a thing or two and I will see you guys next week with a new video.